We've got pretty extreme weather conditions in this country. We need to start thinking about how we're building better. Over the last few episodes, we've been looking at all of the components that go into making a healthy home. Of course, all of those components are talking to a home that is currently built. We're gonna go and have a look at some new builds. Will we know the difference? We're gonna go and have a look at Homestar Homes, Passive House, even, believe it or not, a rammed earth house. Yes, a house made of earth. And they're all apparently what the experts call healthy homes. So we're going to go to Christchurch first to see what this looks like. We're going to go meet Michael Bonnet. Mike company builds homes to a Homestar accredited rating. Let's go understand a little bit more about what this rating system is. When somebody's sitting here talking to you about wanting to build their dream home, how do you sell health? them? For us, it's about trying to reach a standard that is a recognised standard. We look at Homestar. The majority part of Homestar is the thermal comfort. That's the basic structure of the home. So we would initially price based on code minimum. And then we would say there are options with which you can choose. And those options will dictate how far we go. We would improve your floor, your cladding choices, we would improve your glass choice and your aluminium joinery choice, and then your insulation choice. Right. So those are the parts that we would fundamentally change to get you to a Homestar 6. Okay. And then if you want to go to a 7, we would increase that. If you want to go to a Homestar 8, we have to increase it again. Right, so the New Zealand Building Code, if it was put on the Homestar rating scale, where would that sit? I understand it's around a three or a four. Wow. So Homestar is above the Building Code. It, let's say my budget allowed me to build a Homestar 7. Mm -hmm. However, in my heart of hearts, I knew that going a Homestar 8 was going to be much better for my children. In our industry, size means price. So therefore, there has to be some compromises and those compromises are going to be centered around how can I recoup or save that money? It may mean we lose a bedroom, we might lose an ensuite, but that would still make the house better. If we had three houses, the cost per square meter to build the code minimum, six and eight, well, how about we talk about the additional cost? The code house will assume a zero. To do a six is realistically about six to seven percent dearer. To go to an eight is probably 15 percent. Right. So if you shrink the Homestar eight down, that will cover that additional investment. Absolutely. You know, New Zealand has a habit of using cost, of using price mm -hmm. as an excuse. Mm -hmm. And I think it is becoming a lazy excuse because at some point in time, we pay for it. I know respiratory costs New Zealand is close to $7 billion every year. Imagine what we could do if we were to cut that in half by improving the health of our homes. What could we do with $3.5 billion every year? We're off on another adventure to have a look at an earth home. I'm going to admit to you, I didn't realise that we were building them in New Zealand. So I'm fascinated to see what does this home actually look like? What does it feel like to be in it? We're off to the wild west coast of Auckland to meet a young family that are living in their earth home now. Tell me about what a rammed earth house actually is. The key thing is, is that what we've done is we've created rock. These walls will 
hold temperature, that thermal mass in them has so much potential to keep a house warm or cool. So when you talk about thermal mass, what do you actually mean then by thermal mass? Okay, so mass? the ability of these walls, it takes about 12 hours for the sun's heat to get through a wall this thick. So basically what you're saying is you know, understanding this wall's ability to use nature and use the energy that the sun is going to put into this to manage the internal environment. Yeah, so that means no insulation in the walls. This house, it's able to breathe. How long have your family been on this land? So I'm sixth generation and the kids are seventh generation. My family came here in 1860s. Of all of the houses that you could build as your first house, why a rammed earth house? I started reading about the technology behind the rammed earth and the thermodynamics of the walls and because of this location as well, we felt like it looked right, using the right sort of materials to fit into the landscape and things like that out here. What's your experience of living in it? So far in winter, I mean, obviously we've got the fire that can heat the house and then we've got a, a heat transfer system that puts the heat through to our bedroom and the girls' bedrooms. Yeah. Well, it's always stayed like a comfortable temperature. We've never felt like you have to rug up or anything like that or put slippers on or anything. It's, the floor is always like a good temperature when you come out in the morning and mm. never condensation at all. When you built, was it really important to be self-sufficient? Piha weather can be really variable and we've had lots of power cuts. We were quoted $160,000 to get power to the site so it was quite an easy decision when you compare that to it was $45,000 for the solar setup. It's sort of a no-brainer. We've got to be thinking, you know, not necessarily building for ourselves, it's building for our future generations. What are we putting our future generations in? In terms of your future generations, given that your young ones are seventh generation on this land, you know, how many other generations are going to come through this house? Because of our connection to this place and this land, it's something that does factor into us. We know this house is going to last, so it's, you know, it should last 100 to 200 years, hopefully, if you look at previous examples of rammed earth homes. Well, I tell you what, for us it's an absolute privilege being here, because I will have to say, before I got underway with this journey, I had no idea that rammed earth houses even existed. And I hope that Kiwis can know also that, hey, look, this is another option. If you're building, there is a number of different options that we can consider. Passive house, passive principles. On our journey, we keep hearing those terms come up. So today, we're in Para Para Umu to really get a good understanding of what is passive house, passive principles and how does it relate to a healthy home? So, Alron, if I was to try and explain the benefits of adopting passive house principles to Kiwis that are very used to living in houses that are well below minimum standards, how would I do it? The key thing is most people see the term passive house or hear about it and they think energy efficiency. But actually the premise of the Passive House Standard is that the ventilation provided to the building should be enough for the people in there to always have fresh air. So that's the starting premise. And then the next premise is they should also be able to maintain comfort by using only a very little bit of energy all year round. So that's the kind of core. And then from that, you realise that if you're going to achieve that, you have to have a very high efficiency, very well performing building envelope in order to do that. Say so also that it's kind of unique to Passive House doesn't separate out the health and the kind of well-being aspect of the building from the energy aspect. It sort of says right at the start, those two things are related and you can't do one without doing the other, otherwise you get some unintended outcome that you don't want. So Alron, did I just interpret that correctly in that it's possible to build a house that's healthy for the environment, but not healthy for the people who live in it? Yes, it is possible. Uh, but no idea as to what I'm driving to today, other than I'm going to see a passive house in its build state. 
There's so many different terminologies used in the sector to describe different qualities of house. It's actually quite confusing. And so today to see what a passive house actually looks like is going to be fascinating. Well, Murray, this is impressive. I was not expecting to see anything this magnitude. What is unique about this particular build? So this particular uh, build is larger than most. It has a covered floor area of around 660 square metres. So that is a very substantial family home. And it's going to have the energy footprint of around about 110, 120 square metre dwelling. So those who are just learning about what Passive House is, there's actually different tiers. So this home should be hitting a, a plus, which is that it's producing a lot of its own electricity on top of being high performance in its own right. So there's quite a lot of complexity in what we're looking at here. Yeah, correct. You know, we've, instead of single walls, we've gone double walls. There's two layers of insulation on the ceiling, European window joinery, balanced ventilation systems. In fact, the house is so large, we have three ventilation systems through the home, uh, which is unheard of typically in, in projects in New Zealand. Murray, let's go have a look at this house. I'd love to show you. Come on this way. Murray, this joinery here is something in its own right. It is absolutely beautiful. Yes, it is a wood joinery from Germany. And this unit you're looking at here weighs about 800 kilograms. So we had to get a fair amount of guys on site to put it in place. How is this going to open if it's about 800 kilos? Yeah, it's what the Germans called a, a lift and slide. And rather than sliding on the bottom, and it's actually suspended from the top of the joinery. Um, so if you just turn this handle around, um, it just slides very effortlessly for, you know, what is maybe a, you know, almost a ton of uh, joinery. And you'll see the same on the windows as well. It's what we call tilt and turn. So they have three rubber seals, triple glazing. And it's not just about the joinery, it's about where it's placed in the wall. And there's a lot of discussion in the industry right now about our windows are in the wrong place. Essentially our building code or our standard practice is to have the windows out in the cavity, which is on the outside of the home. And even if it's thermally broken aluminium, which is seen as an upgrade in, in New Zealand, it's in the wrong place. The glass theoretically should be in the middle of the wall. So that's where the insulation is working at its best and that's where the glass should be. And Murray, look, you know, as I'm looking up to the ceiling, there's just the detail here is just remarkable. But I am noticing here, you know, this is, I'm assuming, a part of the ventilation system? Correct. Yeah, we have uh, three ventilation systems through the home and these are a balanced system. So they are bringing the same air in as what they're exhausting out again. And when that's exhausting that air from bathroom, laundries, kitchens, we're extracting that energy. So when you have a shower in the morning, you're taking that energy, taking that heat and recycling it through the rest of the house. Right. Likewise with TVs, lights, us, appliances, yes. all of that energy that's being laid off is being harvested and recycled through the ventilation system. Murray, this is incredible in terms of insulation. It looks like it's, it's a lot of it. So actually this is a very thin layer over the face of the, the main wall. Uh, so here we have a 50 millimetre layer of insulation. We have our membrane and then under there we have a main level of insulation. So it's actually two layers. So we're not drilling through timber, we're not having to uh, interrupt the main level of insulation. It's nicely hidden away here. Emma, it is super impressive for me to walk on site and see you here. What about this build for you makes it such a unique experience? So I come from an interior design background. So for me, compared to standard houses, it's just such a big difference. And you can feel it when you come on site in the morning and it's five degrees outside and you come in and it's about 14 degrees inside. The place is relatively open still yeah, yeah. and it's, it's already performing Good well difference. above most New Zealand homes that meet minimum healthy home standards. Yeah, definitely. Mate, this is really, really impressive. Have you ever built a home like this before? Uh, no, no, this will be the first time working on a home like this. The amount of air tightness, just the whole structure of how we started from the beginning to right to this point, it's different. When you go to build a normal house, yeah. will you do things differently as a consequence of having worked on this house? Uh, definitely, definitely, 100%. I see the benefits and I actually, I noticed the benefits as working on here and going back home. Is building healthy just this utopian dream that's pretty much out of reach for most of us? When we come back, we're going to go and have a look at somebody that has built a passive house within the budget that we can afford. The 
concept of a passive house to me feels out of reach for most of us. But today the house that we're coming to see is well within our reach. It's actually built for less than most houses in New Zealand. Hello, Catherine. Hey, Joe. How's it How going? Are you? Yeah, very well. Good Come to see in. you. Yeah, right. <laughs> wow, it is wonderful to be here because this is your dream and That's now real. you're in it. We are. Very much first time buyers, very much, you know, low budget. We've achieved it. Wow. Let's have a look at this amazing passive house that is achievable for all of us. Joe, as an architect, you could have designed any type of house for your family to live in. Yes. Why did you design? this house what was priority for you oh well the priority was something healthy i mean something healthy yeah we we lived in um a small single glazed two bedroom what i like to call a port cabin and it was moldy and it was in a valley so even if you had the windows open it wouldn't be ventilated it got down to about three degrees in winter it got up to 36 in summer with heaters and fans as well trying to manage it it was just awful so the key thing to me was getting an interior space that we could live in and thrive in and be healthy in you can have these incredible buildings that win awards and all sorts of things, but if they don't provide the fundamental underlying reason for housing is protecting people and keeping them safe, then they're not a good building at the end of the day. Joe, one of the things that I think for a lot of us, you know, myself definitely, is the whole concept of passive house feels out of reach for most. You're proving that that's not the case. That's, that was the aim. Basically, a lot of people think you know passive houses and high-performance homes have to be these very modern boxes, mm. but they can look like anything. You know, this is in a rural section. You know, it's cheap and cheerful plywood cladding. All it is, making sure that it's energy efficient enough, and then hand in hand with that is having a, a well-performing interior, and that could be applied to pretty much any building as long as you consider the key things: ventilation, air tightness, good windows, no thermal bridging, basically. So what you're saying is that it would be very achievable in New Zealand to build passive house at a budget that everybody can afford? I believe so. Um, so we've achieved that at this. We've achieved just over two and a half thousand a square meter. Two and a half thousand yeah. a square meter. For a one-off architectural house in, in wow. the Auckland's district. How were you able to build with a very limited budget? Is, how was that possible? Just priorities and the priority with the envelope. So the walls, the roof, the windows, the floor, making sure that whatever happens inside it, it will always be healthy and perform as it's supposed to. At the end of the day, you know, this house could have been, you know, thousands of dollars more, hundreds of thousands of dollars more easily with exactly the same shape, exactly the same form. If we had a different cladding, if we'd paid 50 grand for a kitchen. <laughs> you didn't go with flash taps, tiles I and didn't. kitchen? No, surprisingly, no. The shiny taps had to wait. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's a New Zealand way, isn't it? It is. And that's what value is a lot of the time. That's why some people feel they need to because it's what's assessed as, you know, giving the property value. Because people walk in, they say, oh, it's a nice kitchen. Oh, I really like that bathroom. They never walk in and they say, Oh, so how much is a heating bill, you know, which is the coldest room, all those sorts of bits and pieces. So in terms of ventilation, what do you have through the house? So to be a passive house certified building, you have to have a balanced ducted ventilation system. Ensure that the interior environment has got a healthy air. It's keeping all the pollen and particulate matter out. It's consistently transferring that air all the time and it's retaining the heat. So you're not having to spend loads of money to heat it. Our first heating bill for this house was for $4. $4. Because they overestimated our heating so much than they did an estimated bill. So was that for a day? That was, no, that was for a month. A month, so, $4. A power bill for $4. But, so we have no active heating in here at all? No active heating. So, no, so because this is really very ambient. So what make, what keeps this house warm like us, this? Basically, the more people you've got in it, the more heat is retained. Because the envelope performs so well thermally, the windows were, you know, the most expensive thing in this building. It doesn't let all the heat out, so it keeps it in within the day. We used a product called a SIP for the walls and the roof, which is a structural insulated panel. And it's like an ice cream sandwich. It's two layers of timber sheet with insulation between. And the value with them is one, they're exceptionally quick to put up. The other thing is they do lots of jobs at once. They are the structure, the insulation, the interior finish, and the exterior air barrier, so they're all bracing. And I would imagine because they're continuous, mm -hmm. they remove a lot of opportunity for thermal bridges. Exactly, so there's significantly less timber in the walls of this building. Timber, while it's better, it's still not good for thermal bridging. So the less you've got, the better, and because it's getting so expensive, you might as well use as little as possible at the end of the day. 
So Joe, you've been in here for nine weeks now. Yep. What have you noticed with the girls' health? Both of our kids um, used to have coughs. The last one before we moved out lasted for nearly two months. And every time we went to the doctors, they said, oh, it's, you know, it's a virus, they'll get over it. But they just couldn't get over it. But we literally, we moved in and within a couple of weeks, the coughs had gone. I used to get allergy symptoms in winter in our old house, which I'm presuming was mold spores, because you know there's no flowers during winter. Um, don't get that anymore just gone. <laughs> so in nine weeks you've noticed an improvement in the health of not just yourself mm -hmm. but more importantly your girls. Yeah, her eldest had an um, a inhaler last winter and we, I was terrified that this is the start of something that was going to continue Yeah. Um, but it's gone. No, well it is really great to be sitting on the deck of your passive house. It's ours, isn't it? Yeah. We started the journey to keep our family into a, um, a healthy home. Now, it might be a bleeding heart thing, but I think everybody deserves a house that's going to keep them healthy at the end of the day. That's the purpose of a house. Exactly. Isn't it? It's not an investment, it's, it's your home, it's your, yes. yeah, your life. This home represents a healthy home. This home is what you and I should be living in. And you know what? This home has been built for much less than a lot of homes are being built currently in New Zealand. Why are we not building like this? Living in a healthy home is not a luxury, it's a necessity. Unfortunately, Aotearoa, we've got about 1.8 million homes that were just built to a code. We want to find out, is it possible to build on mass homes that are healthy. And what do we do with the 1.8 million homes that you and I are living in right now that are probably not keeping us as healthy as we need to be kept? So we're gonna go and have a look at an innovation, a Kiwi innovation that could do exactly what needs to be done, turn our homes into homes that keep us healthy. Let's go find out.